Hey guys, my name is Shai and I am super excited to be bringing through some Cassiopeian energy today. And they say, don't worry if the lighting is a little dark <laughs> um, to see the cards perfectly. This is how they want <laughs> it to look. So this is how I'm going to roll with it. And I am so interested in this Cassiopeian like vibe that I have been in for several days now. It started coming through for me around the new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius. That was just a few days ago in my linear time. And it is particularly interesting to me because I have known about the Cassiopeians since, you know, the first time I Googled star seeds, but I never had any personal experience with them or their energy or anything. I just never... It just never came up for me, never came through for me. And it was a complete surprise. <laughs> and um, one of the difficulties I'm going to be having with this video is that the Cassiopeian energy itself makes words difficult. I have been having a lot of trouble with verbal communication. So please bear with me. It's because their energy is... How do I describe? And for just for for what it's worth, I have not like looked them up or read anything or listened to anybody talk about them in, you know, like two years. So I'm just completely going off of my impressions. Of course, you could be have connected, you could be or have connected with other types of Cassiopeian energy that could be quite different than what I'm describing. And it doesn't mean that you weren't connecting with them. It could just mean that you were connecting with a different like, you know, group <laughs> of them, right? Or from a different time, dimension, whatever. But what I have been feeling is that, yes, it's it's heart-based energy, right? We all know that the, the, the Cassiopeians are one of the like love and light civilizations, right? But it is like shades of love, shades of love, so many shades of love. How can you um, experience? everything through a shade of love. It's like they have as many shades of love as, you know, more, way more, way more, but it's it's a good it's a good analogy. If you went to go buy paint, right, and you look at the wall of paint splotches or swatches and there's all of those different shades, right? And it's like every single shade of paint, that's kind of how they experience love. There's so many different shades of love. There's like, you know, a million different red shades of love and a million different green shades of love and a mil million different blue shades of love all together. And what they love most about humanity, about humans, is yes, it's about authenticity, which is something that, you know, we talk about here a lot, but it's it's like beyond authenticity even. It, it's like raw and real. They love most what is raw and real, and that's what they're kind of bringing through for us, to be able to love and feel... It. And using the word love almost doesn't almost doesn't communicate anything meaningful because they experience their entire existence through the lens of love. And we and in English we don't have that many different words for love. I know some other human languages have more words from love, but we really only have, you know, one and we can kind of qualify it a few ways, but we are really not verbally equipped to kind of get at this. That's why their energy is coming through for us on a very visceral level. Um, you know, they're encouraging us to, or, you know, their energy is like, like helping us. It is helping us cultivate this experiencing con like connections with, with other embodied humans, like through eye contact and body language and just vibration and like see i'm at i'm at a loss for words it, it it's part of this is like intuitive communication energetic communication psychic communication yes but at least for right now i'm feeling that it is so um so much part of our experience right now to to have more grounded experiences have more embodied experiences so it's like it's cultivating a hunger inside of us to connect physically. And this is even with strangers. Honestly, guys, I kind of feel like 
finding a stranger, like a random stranger walking down the street and just like staring into their eyes. Like, <laughs> and that is a very bizarre like impulse for me to be having because I don't even make, I never make eye contact with people. I'm like really weird and bad about eye contact. I basically only make eye contact with my husband when I, when I'm like, you know, going through the till at the grocery store. I don't make eye contact with the cashier. I just pay and leave. Like I don't, I don't make eye contact with people, but I feel suddenly this urge to like connect with people and to like gaze into their eyes and like feel like a new type of soul connection, but one that is actually communicated through our embodiments, like through our vessels. And this is an, like helping us ground into our bodies and ground love into our bodies and to rediscover that there are so many different experiences of love and compassion that can be had on the physical plane, on the earth plane. Um, I know for a couple of videos now, I've been really talking about how I'm feeling so much about grounding, grounding, grounding energies and having a new experience of the cycle of life, death and rebirth on earth, like getting completely merged with Gaia's life cycle. Um, and even to that extent, I'm, I'm also feeling like the earth energy, like her consciousness come through more as Terra than Gaia. Um, some of you might be familiar with the idea that, you know, that um, the earth actually has like three names. Um, one of her like two, 3D, 4D self being named Terra. And then her like five, six, seven dimensional self being named Gaia. And then there's a, some people use a third name. It's like long and starts with an A and I can't remember what it is for her um, higher dimensional selves. Um, yeah, I've been feeling that. I've been feeling her come through as Terra. And so Terra to me is like less of a, like Gaia is like the earth mother, right? And Terra to me feels like, you know, a young woman, a young woman who really wants to experience the the sensory world. And she's guiding us through sensory experiences, all kinds of sensory experiences, like good food, good sex, good c conversations, um, good... random encounters with wildlife and with strangers and just the, like grounding into the sensory world. And it's interesting that I feel like the Cassiopeian energy is helping with this by showing us how much love we can, we can embody and how much love and compassion we can experience on the earth plane and in our physical bodies. <sighs> and uh, <laughs> I still want to draw some cards, but there's just, there's so much, there's something else. Um, I want to mention. Okay, no, it's actually, it's gone. It flew flew the coop. It'll come back if, <laughs> if it's supposed to. Oh, no, it's that I understand now why I could never quite catch, catch a vibe on the Cassiopeian energy before. It, it's strange because I still can't actually identify any one thing as, oh yeah, that's Cassiopeian, because it's more of this kaleidoscope or this collage or this collection of shades of love almost. So it's so many different things. It is so many different things. And it's like, it's actually the glue that holds things together. It's the glue that holds things together. So it it's like, there's no one type of egoic experience I can point to and say that's Cassiopeian. It's more like all, all egoic experiences could be, could be Cassiopeian because they're all held together with this glue of unconditional love, but shades of love. It's like every single ego, <laughs> every single ego, <laughs> um, even in the human experience can just be easily absorbed into the Cassiopeian energy because they can love everything. They can love everything. Everything that is real and raw, they love it. They love it. They love it for exactly what it is. If the Cassiopeians have a, would have a mantra, it would be come as you are. Come as you are. That's what they want to, to, to tell us. Like, come as you are. That like, that's it, right? <laughs> yeah, just like the Nirvana song, come as you are, right? <laughs> um, and it's interesting to me that I've been having this experience, um, uh, it's like, you know, after, over the Sagittarius new moon, um, because I can actually see how this is connected to the Gemini Sagittarius axis, because Gemini is, to me, it's not just, not just duality, not just two things, right? Sometimes Gemini is seen as like 
duality or just two personalities or two faces, but to me, Gemini is like every face. Gemini is a multitude. Gemini is the multitude of thoughts and egos and ideas. It is the multitude. And Sagittarius is the fire that melds it all together. It's like the paw where everything goes to alchemize and to be boiled down and then to be like essentially selected for to like what gets to graduate. Sagittarius is like deciding what gets to graduate. So we have this like multitude of energies, of egos, of thoughts, of even feelings, all of it, all of that. And then it's coming up into Sagittarius and being like boiled down and melted down and alchemized and being glued together. So anyway, so that's where I'm at. That's, that's the, <laughs> that's the inspiration behind this video. And let's see just kind of what else wants to come through. I'm using the Starman Tarot, not, this doesn't really feel Cassiopeian to me because that's, kind of what I'm saying, right? Nothing in particular feels, oh yeah, that's Cassiopeian because Cassiopeian energy to me, to right now at least, is the 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 compassionate glue that holds everything together. So it's like this this deck is just as good as any other deck for me wanting to draw messages from Cassiopeia or is it pronounced Cassiopeia? <laughs> I'm not sure. But yeah. To the cards, to the cards. I love this deck. It is one of the highest frequency, most artistic decks that I own, but it is so hard to shuffle. The cards are too tall for my hands. <laughs> Okay, we got King of Pentacles. Definitely all about grounding. Can you see this dude? <laughs> see this king holding the pentacle, holding his staff, rising above the earth and yet connected down into the center of the earth. Come as you are, rise up and ground. Can you float above the earth while also being grounded? <laughs> Ten of wands, okay? Set down your burdens. Set down your burdens. You cannot carry these with you anymore. There's a staircase back here. You cannot walk. You cannot climb your stairway to heaven with this burden. It must be released. It must be put down. I think... You know, I mean, this is a timeless reading. <laughs> this is a timeless reading, so I'll try to stop referring to, you know, the current linear events. But whenever you're watching this, you've probably already been through a massive purge <laughs> process recently. And if you've been resisting that, if you've been resisting that, I think most of you have already put down your burdens. Most of you had, have already been through this release 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 process but if there is something you are still holding on to it's like you it, it's gotta go it's gotta go it's gotta go it's gotta go so so much because it's ew it's it, the vibe they're getting <laughs> sorry for saying ew it's like that was the visceral reaction i just had this feeling of like a rock being like like having a pebble in your shoe for so long it's got it embedded in your foot so okay so even if you think you have already purged everything Man, and I, I almost don't want this message because I feel like I've already purged everything that I need to purge for right now, but maybe there's something else I need to purge. I guess I'm going to have to think about this after this video, but um, it, the image that they're showing me is like a pebble in your shoe for so long. You've been walking on it so long. It's gotten permanently embedded into like the bottom of your foot and it's time to pull that out. And of course, that is not going to be pleasant, right? So if it still hurts, <laughs> that's how you can tell there's something still in there right? If, if it still hurts, there's still something lodged in there. And it could be something that is really, really, like really lodged in there. It could be even be, in, be invisible. And they're reminding me of the time that I had, I thought I had a sliver in my foot and, you know, I dug it out and I thought it was fine, but my foot kept hurting and hurting and hurting and I couldn't find anything. Um, eventually I had my husband have to really look at it and, um, 
there was a piece of glass. There was a piece of glass embedded in my foot and we couldn't see it, right? Because it was clear glass, but he could hear it like, like using the tweezers, like clicking on it, right? And that's how we figured out I still had something lodged in my foot. And I only knew that because it was still hurting, but it was invisible, right? So I had to trust, um, I had to trust that it, that there was something still in there. So what still hurts? What still hurts? If something still hurts, there is something like, if something within you is still hurting, you need to go to that area, go to that theme, go to that place within yourself and like remove the piece of glass that is still stuck in there, right? Take the rock out. There's something still in there. If it still hurts, it means it's not fully healed. Um, and this, like, I don't mean that you should go like digging for, like digging up hurts. I don't, I'm not really into like forcing shadow work or anything like that. It's like, it's going to come up for you, right? So if nothing hurts right now, you're good. You're good. If nothing hurts, you're good. Don't worry about it. Um, but when something does hurt or if something is still hurting as you're watching this, if something is coming up inside of you and something is like going, oh yeah, that still hurts. That's what I'm talking about, right? So that's not going to apply for everybody, but you'll, you'll know, right? Follow the hurts because that's going to be how you put the thing down, put the burden down. Eight of pentacles because you are so close to completing a new cycle of manifestation. There's a new cycle of manifestation coming. And the um, if you're working on a manifestation and it you feel like it's been held up or you feel like you don't know like why, like why isn't it like what's holding up the show, right? What's holding up the show? The thing that is holding up the show is the invisible piece of glass that is still lodged inside of you, still being a burden that you're carrying around and it, it's blocking you. And it's like, the th it might not even be obviously relevant. Like it might not seem connected. Um, Like the hurt or the pain or the burden, it might not seem related at all to your manifestation. Like it could be like an ex- like an ex relationship, right? An ex. And that's maybe like nagging you in the back of your head, just as an example, right? And maybe, maybe the thing you're trying to manifest is like a business. Maybe you're trying to start up a small business and you're like, how can these things possibly be related? Right. But it's like energetically they're related, right? There's something about that ex that you need to like resolve within, within yourself in order to free up your energy in order to manifest your small business. It's like uh, things that don't seem connected can be connected. So Man, I'm spilling cards everywhere. Uh, that, let me just shut, try that again. No, this is. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna shuffle again. <laughs> if any of those were important, they'll come back out. I've been finding myself getting really picky about cards lately. It's interesting. And I've noticed some of my favorite tarot readers that I watch on YouTube that I like binge watch all the time. They've been saying the same thing, like being guided to use fewer cards and to even like look at the cards in less detail. It's interesting because it's interesting to notice that it's not just me um, feeling that. But this is the card. Eight of wands. So when the thing is removed, <laughs> when the thing is removed... That is when the compassion and the love starts to flow. In fact, if you, like, you know, I was talking about all of this Cassiopeian, like, love and wanting to connect and feeling these visceral sensory urges. If that wasn't resonating with you, but you're still, and yet you're still watching this video, <laughs> it's, that's, um, that is what is lying in wait for you once you release the burden, right? The burden is blocking you from, um, experience this kind of Cassiopeian, um, compassionate grounding vibe and releasing the burden will rapidly move you into this new state. This eight of wands is a rapid, a rapid initiation, a rapid initiation. Okay. In fact, before the, um, the new moon, when I felt all of this Cassiopeian energy come through, I was like, I was like purging, right? I was having a few days of like purging frustration and blah, 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 blah. And I was like in like a, you know, it was fine. Like I, I, cause I, 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 you know, I knew what I was going through, right? So I was just kind of waiting it out. And yeah, I felt so much better after the purge was over. So if you're still in the purge, you're aligning to this new experience of grounded, grounded, compassionate, love uh, these shades of love 
shades of love and the switch can happen very quickly and as i'm talking here i was looking down and noticed at the back of this card if i can i don't know they said not to worry about the lighting so i'm gonna just hopefully you can just kind of see back here there's this beam of light that's a spaceship right that's a circular spaceship and there's a beam of light there is a beam of light coming for you guys it is beaming down from you from like there could be actual Cassiopeian or other star family ships outside your house beaming down energy upon you. Like that, that is not at all far fetched whatsoever. You never, it doesn't matter if you don't see them. It doesn't matter if you like don't know anything about UFOs. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. <laughs> um, like, I feel like there is this trend among star seeds, especially ones that have, you know, recently woken up and haven't had any, like, you know, really obvious contact experiences. Um, and then, you know, we go online and we read about all the cool things that other types of people are experiencing. And then we compare ourselves and it's this comparison trap of going like, oh, um, those experiences are for other people. They're not for me. I don't seem to have them. But it's like you, you are, <laughs> you are having them. You do have them. You are just as much... You are equally as powerful and real and significant and impactful as anybody else that you would be comparing yourself to. And the Cassiopeian energy is going to help you jump out of this comparison trap because to the Cassiopeians, all that matters is that you are raw and real. Raw and real. This is like beyond authenticity because this is like raw and real in your body, right? I feel like authenticity, we talk about it's like throat chakra, you know, it's um like you know, speaking your truth, being your authentic self out in the world. But uh, this is where I'm kind of failing with words. I don't know if you guys are catching the difference between like authenticity and like raw and real. There's something more grounded, more earthy um about being raw and real coming through for, for me i think you guys get it <laughs> i think you guys get it it's just like a slightly different take on the same type of thing in a more grounded bodily way a bodily way time for a nap okay so a lot of you <laughs> The Cassiopeians are communicating, I mean, for all of you, all of you, I'll take that back. I'm going to say all of you. They're communicating with you in your dreams. And here's the thing. Since their vibe, their energy is so completely diverse and it is the glue that holds things together, right? So it's almost like the space in between. And the, a word they keep using with me, um, like bringing to my attention is gap bridger, gap bridger. That's what they're also helping us remember that we are, that we are gap bridgers. We bridge the gap. We have one foot <laughs> here and another foot in a completely another world, right? We have, you have one foot in the human world, one foot in the galactic world, right? You have one foot on the earth plane, one foot on the plane of pure consciousness. You have one foot in old 20th, 20th century energy, right? And because you were born then, I mean, most of you were born then, <laughs> you were born in the 20th century with that old, old energy and you have one foot now in the 21st century with all of the new earth energy coming in. It's And that could go on and on and on. And for many of you, actually, actually look at your human lives and see how in your human life you are a gap bridger. How, do, how are you spanning the gap? You are straddling the gap of so many different types of energies and really appreciate the human experience of being the gap bridger. Like, you know, some of you, if you are like bilingual or multicultural, um, like in your biology or your heritage or just your, like the city you live in or like whatever it is, right? However that pans out for you, in what way do you span two or multiple? Maybe it's a hundreds, hundreds of different things even. How are you bringing two things together? How do you how do you help help the worlds collide? But how do you help them collide without destroying each other, right? <laughs> you, you guys remember that Seinfeld episode where George is freaking out because the worlds are colliding? He doesn't want his, like, he has his friend world, like, you know, Jerry's world with his friends. And then he has his girlfriend world, right? And he, he doesn't like his girlfriend to meet Jerry and, you know, Kramer and Elaine because that's the worlds colliding. He can't have the worlds collide. He has to keep them separate. For us, though, we have you know, a foot in each world and they are coming together and we are helping them merge. We are helping them collide, but without cat cat 
catastrophically colliding, right? We want to help them merge without, ha without having them splinter into a million pieces. So, um, in your life, you have had much practice being the gap builder. You have had much practice spanning the gap. You've had much practice having different feet in different worlds. And that has been training. That has been you learning lessons. And all of that is going to help you with, you know, the energetic shifts that are coming up in your linear future whenever you're watching this. Um, especially, especially as the gap between consciousness and earth energy as they come together and as they meld closer and closer and closer that is the biggest thing that you were doing bringing consciousness and physical it i have a hard time i need to come up with a better way of describing that because it's like the way i'm seeing this is like there is non-physical consciousness and there is the physical realm but th that has its own consciousness i don't it's like non-physical consciousness and physical consciousness, like all of the elements, it's elemental, all of the elements, the physical elements, you know, earth, water, air, and fire have their own consciousness and they are like a, a eternally, a eternally embodied consciousness. Like since the beginning of this physical universe, these, like the elemental beings, the elemental, the consciousness of the elements, the consciousness of the physical elements are like coming through really hard and you can tune into that um you know for me it's remembering being water for my husband it's remembering being a rock you know and when you can trace your soul's consciousness back to the elements itself it's like, how old? <laughs> how old is that, right? How old are you? Oh my goodness. But how to describe. So you have, I think most of you are more used to tracing your consciousness down from source, right? Down from source. And, you know, you were a 10th dimensional something and a 5th dimensional something. And then you got your consciousness down to earth and whatever, right? But how do you trace your consciousness up? Like up from the cre the original creation of the the physical universe right you you since you are in a body so your body the physical elements in your body the physical cells in your body like came out of a star at some point right at some point some star exploded and made up the particles that would eventually go on to becoming your body right so your your body has its own consciousness and it is like equal to your spiritual consciousness it's just as spiritual it's like i i don't even know how to how to differentiate them because it's all spiritual, it's all consciousness, but on the one hand we have our, like, I don't even want to say higher, but you, you guys get what I'm saying, right? The non-physical consciousness and then the embodied elemental consciousness, they're coming together and We all have, we all, we are all going to be learning to appreciate the consciousness of our body more and how our body connects us to the elements and how our body came out of a star and like where were those particles before it was in a star right everything like the physical the physical memory the memory that is contained within the cells of our body the the memory that is contained within the elements within every particle of carbon right with every molecule of h2o all, all of it. it it goes back and back and back to the very beginning of this physical universe and um, that's something we're going to be exploring in the same vein that we have explored our non-physical consciousness. We will be exploring the elemental consciousness and our history within the elemental consciousness. And okay, that was a big tangent. I got off of this time for a nap card. <laughs> um, my original message with that was, okay, you're having Cassiopeian themed dreams and you'll know it because they're, they're dreams that inspire you to connect and to love and to feel compassion and to experience things that are raw and real and to have, um, and none of this, the Cassiopeian energy is not at all about avoiding unpleasant experiences or experiences that you might have previously considered to be unpleasant. It's actually about realizing that so much love and joy and compassion can be found even in experiences you might think are unpleasant. Um, for example, um, like, you know, some different types of plant medicine, when you take them, can make you feel 
physically sick, right? And sometimes you your body has to purge before you can get on with the plant medicine adventure, right? Um, but interestingly, on some types of plant medicine, when your body physically purges, you know, typically that is not fun, right? If you're if you've got the flu and your body is purging, you you, you just want it to stop because that is not fun, right? It's it's terrible and you want it to stop. But sometimes on plant medicine, the, even the experience of your body purging can can even be pleasant or it's just like it's you wouldn't even judge it as pleasant or unpleasant you wouldn't even judge your body's purging process as bad or good or anything it's simply what your body is doing and you're simply there to witness what your body is doing and it's just part of nature like your body's purging process is literally just the process of life death and rebirth that's it there is no judgment there is no good or bad there is nothing it is simply the process and you experience it within your compassionate awareness and that's it so in your dreams, um, this energy is coming through and it's going to bleed through into your daily life. And by the way, if some of you ever feel like you need to just pass out randomly in the middle of the day, like getting really tired at two o'clock or something, lie down and just say like, hey, come get me, take me now, I am ready. <laughs> and then let yourself fall asleep. You maybe have a 10 minute power nap. And but that's like communication. That is how I receive a ton of my communication is through like random naps, right? <laughs> random naps when I get really tired in the day. And um, yeah, so there's that. But Be prepared to connect with people in new ways. Be prepared to take risks if the risk is, like, this is not the time to be protecting your heart because your heart can take it. And in fact, they keep giving me, like, three of swords energy. You know, that's the card with the heart and it's got three swords stabbed through it. And they're showing me that it's, like, that that's, like, a heart activation. That is, like, <laughs> it's nothing to be feared. That is just allowing more shades of love to pour through your heart that is allowing more compassion it is just clearing space for more compassion so now is not the time to protect your heart i mean you know if there are those energies that you need to cut out right this the energies you need to let go on of um like to be honest guys right before this all happened um i realized that i still had some stuff from my ex-boyfriend and you know we broke up like eight years ago and I've been married ever since like nine years ago because I've been married for eight years etc cetera, etc cetera. and I realized I still had some stuff in, in the closet that was his and like we're on really good terms we're cool all that but I felt like that we were you know I needed to cut the cord like again like there was still energetic connection there that I no longer wanted it was no longer in my highest good it was no longer in his highest good it was like this is like I gotta like have a second level of purge of this like you know old <laughs> relationship so like as I'm saying like like don't guard your heart too much but like really really be discerning about that I want to be very clear about what I mean past stuff people from your past who definitely had their time like this is not about reconciliation for pe people in the past for the most part right most past energy it's like time to go time to go time to go this is like when I say don't guard your heart too much this is about brand new stuff like brand new if it's like friends coming through if it's um, spiritual contact coming through, if it's ETs coming through, if it is, you know, new relationships coming through, however you're experiencing, or even just like strangers, you know, getting into a conversation at the grocery store with a stranger, right? It's this kind of stuff, brand new energy, brand new type of energy, especially if the people are the kind of people you wouldn't normally have, like, conversations with or hang out with or fall in love with or whatever it's like really be open to new things and really be willing to take risks because your heart can handle it your heart can handle the risk at this point your heart can handle the risk and that it's and that's why the purge is happening this purge and this groundedness it's because you're getting so involved in your human experience that now the things that might used to deal derail you won't derail you they won't derail you and the things that used to scare you won't scare you I mean they still might make you nervous but feel you, you might notice like wow okay I'm nervous but I'm not terrified I'm nervous but this is almost exciting right is it nervousness or is it just excitement to roll with it to roll with it because there are so there's just I, I don't even I don't even have words <laughs> and I feel that for 
most of us, this is gonna be happening like not online. I know, you know, 2020 <laughs> into this year, uh, so many of our interpersonal relationships were virtual, but I feel like this is a return to grounded life, a return to like seeing your hometown or seeing your local area, wherever you live, even if you're just living there temporary, seeing it with new eyes and finding things there that you never thought you would find, like being a hometown tourist type of energy um, and really connecting with the people who like walk the earth right next to you. <laughs> Is that gonna focus on this? It's just a big black dot. It's the new moon says a new start is coming <laughs> a new start is coming 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 a new start is coming in your local area in your local area <sighs> one more one more card from that deck you and your loved ones are safe new moon and cancer somebody needed to hear that you and your loved ones are safe. Crab gods are watching out for you guys. <laughs> this is more than just a message of like, relax, it's okay, you're, everything's gonna be fine. This is, this is the initiation. This is the initiation to know that you are safe, to feel that you are safe, to just. <sighs> feeling safe in your body and feeling safe in the cycle of life, death and rebirth on earth comes with a massive healing of your lower chakras and a massive up leveling of your connection to the physical realm to the earth realm through your senses through your senses okay uh i think if you guys are anything like me <laughs> you have often grounded with your with your upper chakras, right? How often, like I, I, I do this constantly, right? I ground down into the earth by <laughs> meditating and imagining, like astrally traveling down into the into the core of the earth. So it's like grounding, but I was like not grounded while I was grounding. I was like grounding as best I could. Sometimes I would go outside, sure, and like walk barefoot in the grass as much, and I would try to, you know, I love to be in nature as much as I possibly can. Um, but even still, I was always like, you know, ew, like it's dirty, right? Like, ah, oh, it's too cold today. I don't want to take my shoes off. And I'm going to walk with my shoes on, stuff like that. So I think we have often been grounding, but from a, in, in an ungrounded kind of way. And it's like, that was fine. We needed to do that. But this is like, now we're grounding through our senses, through our senses. And that is so that you can literally sense safety security and the fact that you are supposed to be here the fact that you're going to be here for exactly as long as you're supposed to be here your loved ones are going to be here for exactly as long as they are supposed to be here you are completely safe completely protected that's the end of the story and this is not just so right now you might know that intellectually you might know that from your spiritual practice right but you don't typically experience it in your body in fact you experience threatening situations in your body every day right you get in a car every day or you walk down the street next to a car right that's threatening <laughs> everything is threatening all the time and it's like we're, we need to be done with this feeling of being threatened and it's time to sense to sense to actually sense physically sense i don't even know what that would be like i've never even thought about this before what would it be like to physically sense with your physical body <laughs> with your physical embodied senses to actually sense a feeling of safety I don't know if I've ever experienced that. I don't know what that's like, but that that's what's being initiated for us. That's going to be the next initiation to be able to just walk out your front door with nothing but the clothes on your back, if that, right? And just walk off and know that you are completely safe and know that you can 
do whatever it is that you feel called to do and that you can walk in perfect alignment, being perfectly safe, perfectly protected. Your body is protected. Your loved ones in their bodies are protected, safe, safe because they are completely at one, completely at one with, with the earth. And that's it. That's, <laughs> that is what we are here to experience the safety and security and peace and love of existing within the earth plane in our bodies. So I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.